Hi, welcome back to my class of stock market operations. So in this class, I'm going to deal with dematerialization, demat account, and what is trading account, who are the depositories and depository participants, and the trading mechanism in this, okay? So let's begin with the first part that is dematerialization you know what is dematerialization is known to you you know uh, the physical form of material form of uh, instrument is converted into digital form okay so that's why dematerialization is a process okay what is this it is a process by which a client can get a physical share certificates converted into digital or electronic form it means an investor who wants to he who is intending to dematerialize his securities needs to have an account the same itself is called as demat account with a depository participant it means an investor to trade on the stock exchange he should have to open a demat account with the depository participant okay so little bit some more information let us understand about the dematerialization as you understood just now dematerialization is a process by which a physical certificates that is of a shares may be there or debentures may be there or other securities are converted into electronic form or digital form you can say okay so here you know a beneficial owner who is also called as a DMAT account holder, okay? So in short, what we can say him is BO. BO is nothing but beneficial owner or he is called as a DMAT account holder. That is nothing but investor, okay? So an investor has to submit the request for a dematerialization by submitting the DMAT request form, okay? So what is this? He needs to fill DRF that is DMAT request form, duly completed along with the concerned physical certificates to his or her DP, that is de uh, depository participant, okay? So an investor who wants to convert his uh, physical formed securities into dematerialized form, what he has to do? First, he has to fill up an application that is called as DMAT request form. Completely, he has to fill it up. Along with that, he has to submit a physical share certificate or a security, okay? So uh, to whom he has to submit? To a depository participant, okay? So after uh, submitting this only, his securities can be converted into dematerial form. So let's come to the account. What is this? DMAT account. What is this account is? It is an account which is used to hold or store the shares and securities in an electronic form. So where the securities are in the form of digital, the same account is called as DMAT account, okay? An investor can hold a wide variety of investments such as he can hold, he can invest in bonds, equity shares or government securities or even mutual funds or exchange traded funds also he can invest in this. So all these kinds of securities can be held in dematerialized form that is in the digital form. Okay. To have this or to, uh, 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 what do you know, to see what varieties of investments are made by an investor, in which all the securities he has invested, how many securities are held by him, everything will be displayed in the DMAT account only, okay? Similar, it is very much similar to a bank account. A DMAT account is either credited or debited each time when an investor buys or sells securities, okay? So whenever he buys or sells uh, securities at that time, his account, DMAT account will be either credited or debited. If he sells, his DMAT account will be debited. If he purchases, if he buys any securities, his DMAT account will be credited. Okay. So in the same way, like our bank account entries are made. Okay. So let's move on to the another account, which is called as trading account. Okay. So uh, you have learned, you know, uh, actually an investor to trade or to open a DMAT account, he has to have one bank account. Okay. So when he requires his bank account, second account is called as trading account, okay? So trading account will also be opened. Then the third one is called as DMAT account, okay? So three accounts are there in fact, as everybody will be having what bank account, okay? So what next he has to do? He has to open a DMAT account. To open a DMAT account, he has to open a trading account also, okay? So whenever an investor approaches a broker, he will open a trading account also, right? So what is this trading account is meant for or why we do require a trading account, okay? 
It helps an investor to buy and sell securities in the stock market. And it is linked with what? It is linked with what, you know, bank account. Investor can add money from his bank account to trading account or vice versa. He can even withdraw from his trading account to bank account. Okay. It means what? A cash or fund balance is displayed in the trading account. So before buying securities, an investor requires funds. So funds are displayed in the trading account. How much amount is there in the uh, trading account to buy the securities will be displayed in the trading account only, okay? Whenever he sells the securities, his trading account will be credited, okay? So it is also like a bank account only. Let's move on to the another term, which is called as depository, okay? Who is depository, all right? So we will learn in the slide, okay? According to the Depositories Act 1996, a depository is an organization. It means what? It is a financial institution or it is an organization where the securities of a shareholder are held in the form of electronic accounts in the same way as the bank holds money, okay? So it means what? Depository is an institution which is having a pool of or a, a bank of different account holders, deposit account holders information will be stored with the depository only. With the help of depository only, the investor, an investor will be buying and selling the securities in the form of dematerialized, right? In the form of digital, okay? So for this, we want a depository, okay? Depository holds an electronic custody of that is electronic custody is nothing but digital custody of securities and also arranges for the transfer of ownership of securities on the settlement dates, right? So before the settlement takes place, what is settlement? What is settlement? Well, uh, a buyer should receive the securities, seller should receive the cash, right? So when both the parties will receive whatever they should receive at that time, a transaction is called as settled, okay? So, on the date of settlement, there is a requirement of transfer of securities from the seller's account to the buyer's account and from buyer's account, the seller should have to receive cash also. So ownership rights should be transferred from the seller to the buyer also. All these things will be done by a depository. That is, one is transferring the electronic form of securities to the buyer and the other side, the ownership papers, that is ownership rights of securities will be transferred from seller to buyer, okay? So, depository. a depository is a securities bank, okay? Securities bank and the pool of securities, all securities do dematerial formal erodu, details are depository. Bank and the bank institution, Allah, it is a, a institution which keeps, it is an institution which keeps the records of digital form of securities held by all the investors with it, okay? So that's why it is called as securities bank that facilitates faster settlement without risk and at a, a low cost also, okay? So very least cost will be taken up by them. So let's understand who are these people, depositories, where these people are there or how many depositories are there in India and all. Let us learn. Depository is a place where financial securities are held in the dematerialized form and it remains, okay, it also maintains ownership records and facilitates trading of dematerialized securities, okay? So ownership records will also be maintained by the depository as well as dematerial form of securities will also be maintained by the depository. So how many depositories are there in India? There are two depositories functional in India, okay? What are these? The first one is National Securities Depository Limited. That is, in short, we say it as NSDL, which assists to take trades on the platform of NSE, okay? So second one is called as Central Depository Services Limited. This is, in short, we call it as CDSL. You may get two marks question for this, expand, NSDL, and CDSL also, okay? So that's why no done, the long form of National Securities Deposit Limited is NSDL. The other one is CDSL, Central Depository Service Limited, okay? So it works for BSE, okay? So it is associated with BSE, NSDL is associated with NAC, okay? So let's move on to the depository participants. So under the depositories, you know, under these depositories, there are number of depository participants, okay? To carry out the work of conversion of dematerialized form securities as well as the 
uh, transfer of the ownership records of seller to buyer. Okay, so that work of transfer of the securities from seller to buyer that will also be done by depository participant. It means there are only two depositories under these de two depositories. There are many more depository participants who are working to assist the work of the same thing. OK, so depository participant in short, what we call him as DPs. OK, so depository participants are called as DPs. Here, DP is an agent or it is the agent or the registered stockbroker. Okay, so they are also called as stockbrokers. Look at it. It means what? Stockbroker also renders the services of depository participant. Is that clear to everybody? Okay, so he is an agent or the registered stockbroker of depository. Either he works under NSDL or it works under CDSL. Okay. Through the dep deposited participant, a person can open and maintain the DMAT account. You know, when you want to, you wish to open a DMAT account, an investor should approach a broker who is also a depository participant. You can, I, I hope all of you are understanding. Okay. DMAT account is opened with a depository participant. Okay. So DMAT account, you will have to open. They are the link between, these depository participants are the link between whom one side depositories are there, the other side investors are there, okay? So they are appointed by the NSDL or CDSL. They are the registered stockbrokers. They are the agent of NSDL or CDSL and the other side who are there investor for the investors records will also be maintained it means all the investors records in the digital form as well as the ownership rights everything will be maintained by depository participants okay i hope all of you are following this okay depository participant is described as an agent or the depository Okay, agent of the depository registered with the CB. So ultimately, where the registration takes place is with the CB only. Okay, so with the CB under the CB's Act. And the deposit participants are the intermediaries between the depositories, one side, the other side, investors. The relationship between DP and the depository is governed by an agreement. Okay, there is an agreement between the depository and depository participants, which is made under the Depositories Act. It means there is an act which is called as Depositories Act. Under this act, an agreement is entered between the depository and depository participant. As per the agreement, the work will be taken over. Okay. So at last, let us understand who are the DPs, deposit participants in India. These are the examples, you know. These are the all examples of brokers as well as deposit participants. There are so many number of brokers are there or number of deposit participants are there. So most popular deposit participants are Sher Khan, Zeroda, India Infoline, Angel Broking, and Reliance Securities, ICICI Securities, Motilal Oswal, Anand Rati, Kotak Securities, right? There are a number of deposit participants are there in India. I hope here you understood the meaning of depository, deposit participant, dematerialization process, everything, okay? So thank you. Uh, all of you and uh, please stay with my channel and watch it share it to your friends also in forthcoming videos i'm going to upload very interesting processes uh, related to the stock market operations i will get back soon wait till the next class okay so thank you very much here i conclude it